Hello, yes, it's Nick again, talking about tins. <laughs> okay, but on a more serious note, um, I want to talk to you today about that one there. If you've seen the rest of my videos, you know that I use tins to make things called wood gas stoves. Uh, wood gas stoves essentially use burning matter in the bottom of a tin, and as the gases and smoke rises up, something called, um, I think it's called secondary combustion or something like that happens when air holes around the top bring uh, fresh air into the tin. I mean this one here is two tins, one inside the other, one golden syrup tin and one uh, espresso coffee tin. There's holes around the base of the es uh, espresso tin to allow air to enter in and it goes up through the little holes at the bottom of the inner tin and the ring of holes around the wall of the inner tin on the, at the base, near the base. It makes all the burning matter deep down in there get plenty of air. They're, these are always top lit, you always put your lighter fluid and stuff on the top and like that and it burns down gradually giving off its vapors and gases and carbon monoxide, hydrogen and the rest of it and the air coming in here reignites the gases and you get fire, you get flame. Because all flame is burning gases or airborne particulate matter or uh, vapors which are also airborne. Now, what I've been doing, bearing in mind that there's this lattice of holes in the bottom of the big tin, is I've been taking smaller tins all with holes cut in them in roughly the same pattern. So a ring of holes, in, in this case they're near the top but not at the top, okay, there's a bit of distance. And there's a ring of holes towards the base of the wall on each tin and a mesh of holes on the bottom of each tin. And that's it. And I discovered that with ordinary, you know, small f food tins using wood pellets as fuel you can get some very interesting burn times and results. All the burning matter comes up here, the ex extra air goes in these holes, all right, because I, I reckon because you've got a bit of distance between the top and where these holes are, the extra convection helps to suck the air in uh, to allow your combustion to occur. And using wood pellets have had some amazing results. Now, this morning I went down to the supermarket and bought a tin of pilchards. I was not interested in the pilchards, I was interested in the tin because it's small. Uh, just to give you an idea of scale, there's my mobile phone, there's, my, there's the pilchards tin, it's small, okay? It's that friendly small, that fucking small, alright? Just to give you an idea of the dimensions, it's a very small tin of fish threw the fish down the toilet, wasn't interested in them, and got the drill out straight away. Did the same pattern, ring of holes near the top, not quite at the top, but near the top, and a ring of holes on the bottom, as well as a mesh of holes underneath that. Because this larger tin has already got um, a mesh of holes at the bottom to allow air to come in from underneath, I could rest this tin once I put 50, 50, 50 grams of wood pellets in there just 50 grams. I set it up in the middle, put a blob of barbecue lighting gel on top of that and lit that with a bit of cardboard. Now this is interesting because from the moment of ignition uh, onwards it burned for 27 minutes which for 50 grams is an amazing result. Now what I've, the other thing I've discovered about wood pellets is that they have a um, energy capacity of 4.7 kilowatt hours per kilogram. That's 4.7 watt hours per gram. So if you could just burn literally just one gram of wood pellets over a period of one hour, you get literally 4.7 watts out of it. So if you want to have a very high temperature for a short period of time, you need to burn your wood pellets very quickly. If you want lower energy coming out, you need to burn your wood pellets slower. Every single size of stove is okay for different quantities of wood pellets. Depending upon the speed you want to burn them, 
Okay, and you've got to experiment with that. Remember, I got if I if I get 27 minutes of burn time from this, let's say the first five minutes is just um, getting the top layer of wood pellets ignited. Then all the rest of the time is the remaining energy being burned. So let's say that's 21 minutes. Sorry, 22 minutes of um, of burn time. So you got you go on, get out a calculator. You do the math. 4.7 watt hours per minute per gram multiplied by 50 tells you how much energy would be released if the whole thing was released in an hour. As we're talking about um, just over a third of an hour, basically multiply that figure by three, and you got an idea of how much energy was coming up in the flames at, on average during that time. Okay, it went out, the gases went out once, so I just had to take my lighter and let you just spark the gas, and I got the flame going again. And I did need to use a fork to stir the um, sediments around to make sure I kept combustion going. But on the other hand, that was pretty good. I put my hand over the flame and it was hot. So it was quite a lot of um, densely packed energy in one, one in one space. I mean, for most of my cooking requirements, this one is perfect for about 100, uh, 100 grams or 120 grams. That's fine. This one's okay for about 80 grams of wood pellets. All right, but uh, I really wanted to try and see how much damage I could do with just 50, uh, 50 grams. So now we're going to try a cook test with this one. Because with this one, with 100 grams, I could fry three eggs and make enough uh, hot water for two cups of tea. I did that recently. With 100 grams of wood pellets. So basically, you know, if you're the kind of person who, buy, who cooks, I'm uh, sorry, who heats your house with wood pellets, who heats your water with wood pellets, there's another use for wood pellets, all right? And you can make it even cheaper when you're using these stoves through getting like twigs and stuff you collected on a walk in the country, making sure it's dry, and then chopping it up with a set of secateurs and mixing it up with a blend. So what we end up with is an incredibly, incredibly cheap way of doing cooking. Out, of course, outside. I mean, I don't know about the chemistry. My understanding is that you might get like carbon monoxide coming off the flames. I don't know. And yeah, you do have a problem with startup. There's an issue there. So um, one of my next goals is to try and find a way of igniting the fuel without needing to use barbecue lighting fluid or barbecue lighting gel or stuff like that. So it becomes much more convenient way of doing your cooking at home. Um, of course, outside. The only other thing I'd say is it's got to be relatively windless. The um, wood gas flames are quite fragile and sensitive to the wind. Sometimes it's actually beneficial. I made another stove. There's another stove around the belt, and when the one I overfilled that, and the flame light went down, and I put the thing out into the outdoors, into the wind, just to just to smolder away. The wind went into it, the holes at the bottom, and kept the combustion going for another half an hour of live, tall flame. So sometimes wind can be good if it's going in in the right way. So I may want to experiment with um, fan-driven systems at a later stage, but at the moment I'm just trying to do everything with convection to reduce the need for me to, um, you know, need to have like batteries and other things that will either damage the environment or cost money, because I basically I'm trying to find the cheapest way of generating cooking energy. I mean, my kitchen is like apart from the microwave, all right, but yeah, no, it's all electric. And electric cooking is expensive. So by doing this, I can have like a, a an impromptu gas kitchen outside. Great. Uh, I want to make a, a couple of hydrogen machines as well so I can use that inside. Um, but at the moment, my wood pellet experiments are moving on some. And I'm very proud. And if I do go camping, I can take this to spring camping and just use, you know, either twigs or little bags of wood pellets that I can bring along with me. And yep, it all fits together nice and snug. So it's... There we go. Solid fuel wood pellet stove kit. Um, damn near zero cost. There we go. The, the only real expense so far is the barbecue lighting um, gel. If I can overcome that problem, 
I'll tell you guys about it. And it'll be great. Um, and that's you know that's more or less it. I'm trying to find a more efficient way of using the wood pellets, which is an amazing fuel. Amazing. Speak to you soon. Nick out.